Okay, I want to talk a little bit, uh, cover some more provisions of Torah that I haven't figured out what people have such problem with. Uh, let's start in Leviticus 17, verse 14. It says, As for the life of all flesh, its blood is identified with its life. And if you look at the way they think, when you go to the hospital, what do they do? They do a bunch of blood tests. If you go to the ER and you have some kind of problem, what do they do? They test the blood for all sorts of things like magnesium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, to see how things are, because it teaches, tells them about the liver, it tells them about the kidneys, it tells them all sorts of things that could be going wrong with, with us. and. It is our blood that carries the, the oxygen to the rest of the body and all these sorts of things. So, so we see that that is a it is definitely the life is in the blood, as Scripture says. Therefore, I said to the sons of Israel, "You are not to eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off." So what does it mean to be cut off? Well, the, I think if you look in scripture, you will find that there's an olive tree. And like Paul talks about being grafted in or regrafted, and those that don't bear fruit, you also see that in that concept in uh, John 15, where uh, you have uh, about abide in the vine, abiding, abiding in in Yeshua and in the Messiah. You find that several places about abiding. You also see it in First John, First and probably Second John, about abide, abide in me. And and one we we know that we abide in him by doing certain things. So that's where you kind of see about being cut off. That we are cut off from the, from the tree of that you have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you have the tree of life, and the question is, which tree do we do we want to be part of? The Gnostics will say that that um, oh, uh, it, it, there's always a secret knowledge somewhere that they keep wanting to try to find. Just like agnostics uh, is not knowing, gnostic being knowledge talking about knowledge and by the way in that whole thing muse is to think a muse is not to think hence amusement parks but the whole point of is that where do we choose which which are we going to choose the tree of life what is the tree of life there's life in this book and what it says how to love one another if, if everyone chose not to covet you wouldn't have to worry about it if everyone chose not to murder you wouldn't have a problem with that stuff if everyone chose to not commit adultery you wouldn't things would be a lot different in this world if people didn't choose to uh, bear false witness you know that you wouldn't have the corruption and the things that we do the greed and the, uh, the trying to deceive people you wouldn't have those things because people would know you wouldn't have innocence going to prison as the founders of this country said, it is better for an innocent 
for a guilty man to go free than an innocent suffer. Those are all things about Torah. Those are all things about being part of the tree. Uh, have the tree of life is we don't do those things. Sure, we can do things. We, we can try to find knowledge, but knowledge in and of itself doesn't do it isn't as important as practice. You can have all the knowledge in the world. There are people that are very educated, but they have no common sense. What good is that? And so you have that whole thing of the of the all uh, the whole idea of being cut off. They're cut off from their nation. Uh, let's go to another thing. Uh, let's look, look at Leviticus 18, eight, verse 18. You shall not marry a woman in addition to her sister as a rival while she is alive to uncover her nakedness. What's the problem with that? There, I don't see a problem with that. Why would you want to? Why would you want to marry someone's sister? Uh, your uh, sister of a woman you're already married to. That's Torah. What's the problem? There, I don't see it. You sh verse twenty one. You shall not give any of your offspring. To offer them to Moloch. You should not profane the name of the Lord your God. Name of God, I am the Lord, he says. You shall not lie with the male as one lies with the female. It is an abomination. Uh, and then you t have about bestiality. It says in verse 24, though, do not defile yourselves by any of these things for by all these things the nations which I ha am casting out before you have become defiled for the land has become defiled therefore I have brought its punishment upon it so the land has spewed out its inhabitants but as for you you are to keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native, nor the alien, nor the sojourner among you. For the men of the land who have been before you have done all these abominations, and the land becomes defiled. And, you know, you've, it, and talks about them being spewed out. That's the whole purpose of why Torah still matters. So, uh, in another video, I'll continue to address parts of Torah, and I keep asking, uh, because I want people, I want to put this before the people and ask, why is this a problem? Shalom, shalom.